Here we have the 2012 Corolla Fielder. This is considered to be one of the most, and if not the most, reliable cars in the industry. This particular model here is a 1.5 litre manual. It also comes in a 1.8 litre and also a hybrid model as well. Being a station wagon, one of the important things is making sure the car is uh, practical in terms of size. So, first of all, I'm a short fella, but this seat is in a is in a pretty neutral position, not too far forward, not too far back. And as you can see, I've got plenty, plenty of leg room here. My knees are miles away from the seat in front of me. Headroom, it's not too bad either. It could be a bit better, but most of the cars in this segment won't have a lot of headroom, so it's probably the best you're going to get. You're also given a lovely armrest. And uh, as you'll see, being a front wheel drive car and well planned out underneath, you've got no hump here for the uh, transmission and drive shaft. You've got cup holders here in the side and they're not very big, so they won't do you a great deal of help, but they're there. And uh, one of the other features of this car is that all windows are fully automatic, so you'll find all four window switches are fully automatic. The practicality also extends itself to the rear of the car. As you'll see inside, we've got this uh, concealer over here to keep all your stuff private and out of sight of thieves. And this can be pulled back, of course. These can be yanked down. And for larger, taller items being fitted in the rear of the car, this can be completely removed. Now, also underneath here, we've got more storage room under, uh, over here and some tools for when your car breaks down which will never happen in this car because it's a controller. And more storage here. And underneath here, you've got your spare tire. And be pleased to know, it's not an ugly space saver, it's a full size tire. There's also these little hooks here for your chopping bags. And as you already knew, these seats can fold down as well fully. So you've got heaps of storage space for carrying heaps of cargo. The cabin inside here is quite a nice place to be in. It's pretty comfy and it's actually fairly spacious. You've got uh, this sort of carbon fibre type stuff trim all over. Um, these are all uh, hard plastics but this is a cheap car, that's what you expect. Being a cheap car though, um, it's not too bad. There's uh, quite a lot of room. It's a very, very tidy interior. I think it's quite well designed. I mean, it's simple, it just works. There's nothing wrong with this interior. Gauge cluster is nice and easy to read, and it's got a few bits of information there with your temperature and your, uh, your range and uh, the clock and all other bits and pieces. So that's the interior of this car, and uh, let's take the car for a drive and see how she goes. So what's the crawler filter like to drive? Well, what I've learned with this car is that if you don't expect the car to go to 0 to 100 in 3 seconds, it's not too bad of a car. It's not too slow. And what I've been driving previously is a very, very fast car, and so this car straight away felt very slow. Once you get over there, it's not too bad. Initially, the accelerator is quite responsive, and it, it drives pretty well, and then if you start going off the, if you start to speed up from off the line, it's not very quick, of course. But when you start gaining momentum and you start making your way through the gears, uh, it drives pretty well and it uh, it speeds up nicely. And the uh, 
The transmission is quite smooth, it's very easy to put the gears into place. The clutch is pretty good, it, it's, uh, the bite is at the very right point. It's a very good car to learn driving manual in. It's not too early and it's not too late and you can easily anticipate exactly when you need to take the clutch in, take the clutch out again. Even though it isn't the world's fastest car, once you do get up to speed, around 100, 110 kilometers an hour, it cruises pretty well. And uh, it has no issues speeding up, slowing down. Although if you are gonna overtake someone, you definitely wanna go down to third gear. Because the fifth gear and fourth gear um, are set up like a sixth gear and a fifth gear really. They're just uh, overdrive gears. Even though uh, it is a little bit slow when you're on those higher gears and even though you're required to downshift a bit more, it does mean the car is a lot more fuel efficient when you are cruising. There's nothing that you wouldn't expect, put it that way. And I think many cars, they, uh, you know, you pay this extra money and it's got bigger engines and it's got all these fancy gadgets and they don't quite deliver. Whereas in the Crawler, you know exactly what you're going to get and there's absolutely no surprises. It drives just like you would expect it to drive. I think there's no doubt that if someone asked me if I would recommend them this car, that I would say yes. Unless you think the car is really ugly, unless you find it way too slow for your liking, there really is nothing that you can fault this car on. It's really spacious in the front seats and the back. And uh, if you look at a similar size sedan, um, a lot of them are a compact size sedan, so you do lose a lot of leg room in the back. And a lot of the, the newer models, they have a sloping roof line at the back, and you do lose a lot of headroom. And this car being a station wagon, of course, there's heaps of headroom, so that's definitely not, not going to be an issue for you. I really like the cabin. I think it's a very tidy and neat cabin. Um, the, the plastics and the materials are obviously you know cheap, um, but that's what you expect for this kind of classic car. But um, it's a very nice cabin. It's it's spacious. Um, there's yeah there's heaps of room. It's not very claustrophobic in here. Um, you've got heaps of storage. Uh, my main uh, issue with the storage here is that uh, it's not felt lined, so it's all plastic, which means any loose items are going to rattle, and you're going to hear it when you're uh, driving on bumpy roads. Um, but that's to be expected. So there you have it. The Corolla Fielder is pretty much everything you'd expect it to be. It's reliable, it's efficient, it's practical, and it's cheap. There's not many things you can fault this car for. The only thing maybe is it's a little bit too slow. But again, not many cars in this segment are fast and you can't really expect to get a uh, fast car out of 1.5 litres anyway. I would definitely recommend buying this car if it's what you're looking into and I would definitely say go for the uh, manual option and if you can't find a manual, go for the 1.8 litre auto. Thanks again for joining us on New Zealand Car Reviews. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Please like it and subscribe for more New Zealand car reviews.